me, mummy me. Hello, hello, hello everybody, and welcome to Five Year Club video number 224. I interviewed uh, someone today, actually two people, um, but anyway, um, one of the people had studied Greek and Latin uh, in college, and then later decided to build websites. So in the last year, he had been learning how to build websites. Uh, and what came up in the conversation with him, it, I asked him like where he was, he thought in the process of learning this stuff, and he said that he had become comfortable being uncomfortable. And that phrase I thought was neat because it kind of sums up how I view successful people in very technical fields. In fact, in college, it occurred to me that the people who are really good at, at math are people who are really good at tolerating, tolerating mental pain. Because if you study math, it's one of the purest forms of like analytical thinking challenge. And so just like you know Arnold Schwarzenegger to get those really big muscles, has to be able to tolerate the pain. You can see I have Arnold Schwarzenegger muscles here, right? He has to be able to tolerate the, uh, the, the pain of the muscle fibers breaking and of the lactic acid building up. Uh, similarly, if you want to become uh, really good at, at math, you need to be able to tolerate this kind of mental discomfort, this, you know, where you, parts of your brain will say, I don't want to do this anymore. And then another part of your brain says, well, you're going to, you're going to burn that glucose anyway. You're going to continue thinking about this problem anyway. Um, and so I see those, you know, when it comes to math, I see those two types of personalities. I think one type of personality just has some really good machinery for calculating. And another type of personality has a uh, okay machinery for calculating, but a really good machinery for tolerating pain. And uh, along these lines, I thought it was a good time uh, maybe to branch out a little bit and to provide you with some resources in a financial area that um, doesn't come up most of the time and that may not be relevant to your life and that is a bit technical, a bit uh, challenging to understand. Um, but certainly if you're in tech or if you're just interested in what kind of how tech operates from outside the industry. I think that these uh, websites I'm going to share with you are, are, are pretty cool. And certainly if you're in tech, I think it's totally worth it for your career to read this stuff, to bookmark it, to regularly uh, look at it, because sooner or later it's going to come up in your life. All right, what am I going to cover first? I think first I'll just cover TechCrunch. Right, so if you're in tech, you probably know TechCrunch. If you're not in tech, uh, TechCrunch is kind of like the Wall Street Journal of tech or like the New York Times of tech. It's probably the main tech website uh, that people talk about, that news is released on, that really focuses on um, Silicon Valley or startups or just purely technology companies. Um, and I don't know what else to say about it. I mean, there's obviously a bunch of websites that cover it, but if you read TechCrunch, you will kind of get the average of what's going on in tech. So, you know, you can see Ethereum's price, Ethereum, Ethereum's falling price splits the crypto community, right? So um, most people are not even gonna know what Ethereum is, right? Uh, but if you read TechCrunch, you will hear about Ethereum on a semi-regular basis as different things happen with it. So, um, yeah, I would encourage, let's see if I can get the address bar down here, and then you can see uh, the name of the website so you can know what URL to go to. And open this up a little bit, just a little bit. All right, the next one is called AVC, avc.com. This is a blog by a venture capitalist, hence VC, named Fred Wilson, and it's been... Um, it's been around for a while. I'm not even sure how long it's been around. Um, oh, come on. I was hoping. Yeah, since 2003, which is forever in the tech world. So almost 15 years. 
Um, and this guy has a lot of good articles about venture capital. Um, what is venture capital? Venture capital is when a group of people get together to fund ventures. And frequently they're going to put their own money in. They're going to put, they're going to gather up money from uh, other wealthy investors. And then they are going to work to identify and invest in profitable startups and profitable, or not profitable startups, but um, promising startups, I guess you should say. Uh, when VCs invest, they invest at like all different kinds of levels. They'll invest at the very beginning, or maybe they'll just do a follow-on round of a company that needs to uh, scale up some. So avc.com, uh, just a smart guy writing about all different kinds of venture capital topics. Um, that is a duplicate, so I don't need to click there. Next one is feld.com. This is by Brad Feld. He is a uh, he's one of those like MIT prodigy guys. Um, started a company, um, exited, was rich, and now he runs uh, the Foundry Group. Apparently, um, he works actually out of Colorado, which is interesting because most people don't. I think it's Boulder, um, but he's a super smart guy. Um, and the reason why I want to hi highlight him in particular is because he has a uh, this term sheet series and the term sheet is the funding term so when a venture capitalist or somebody funds your company there will be a list of terms and you know like I will fund your company if or this is how the funding is going to work and in that big uh, contract of terms there are all kinds of little legal mechanisms that can be tweaked and negotiated and changed and if you're not familiar with those uh, term sheets, then you're not sure how these things can be negotiated or how they might be set up at different companies. This guy has um, has written uh, a series of you know detailed articles about all the different terms in the term sheet and how these term sheets are set up. And um, I think that it's just like really useful and normal people can read this stuff and understand what's going on um, and then later when some crazy word like liquidation uh, preference comes up uh, then you'll know uh, what's going on so I would encourage anybody in tech definitely read uh, this term sheet series you can look up Feld term sheet series on Google I guess that's a pretty fast way to do it uh, so that is the second VC blog that I think is pretty cool this is an influential article. I think it's probably, I, I probably covered it on this channel before. I know I mention it to uh, a lot of people who think they want to live here someday. It was actually referred to me by um, a very smart guy who's on my Facebook. So thank you very much, nameless smart guy on my Facebook, uh, if you notice this video. Um, and it is by the founder of Wealthfront, I believe the CEO of Wealthfront, which is a company that helps people invest in index funds. Primarily, it's kind of like Betterment, um, but I think they've branched outside of index funds a little bit, which I don't think I agree with, but who cares, because I'm not evaluating wealth for the company. I'm talking about this blog article. This blog article is a simulation of a Silicon Valley couple, and they're simulating you know, a pretty affluent Silicon Valley couple um, buying one of these $1 million houses with $200,000 down, which would be 20% on a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage. And they even have a low interest rate compared to the interest rates today for that fixed rate mortgage. And they kind of model the entire life of these people. They model paying for college. They model having some kids. And they find that um, they have a big problem retiring and paying for their kids and paying for this house unless they had a big old chunk of money to throw at the house at the beginning, uh, which they would need to get from equity, which... Um, you know, you would need to get that equity from a company exit. And so they encourage people to join, I think it's like medium uh, growing companies. They think that's the sweet spot for being able to identify uh, to identify a promising equi equity opportunity. Um, so over 20 years, you should have at least five shots at a big outcome managed well. One or more of your equity stakes should be able to address the shortfall required to retire comfortably. So it's very optimistic that you will land one of these equity exit deals. And in fact, I know people who have you know, landed equity exits that are hundreds of thousands of dollars that certainly help them afford their homes. Um, I would like to be more optimistic about 
this whole equity deal, but I have not been terribly uh, successful in my own equity dealings. Uh, so, but then again, you know, I also didn't strategically uh, plan out my equity compensation strategy from the beginning of my career. So there is certainly something to be said for planning. In any case, uh, I would encourage anyone in Silicon Valley or outside of the Silicon Valley just uh, because you're interested to read this article. I'm going to post all these links in the description because that will just make it easy for you. The final blog post is by a guy named Lou Montuli. And Lou Montuli is interesting to me not only because his name is Lou and my name is Lewis, and not only because he's an engineer and I'm an engineer. Uh, he was actually a friend of a friend, and um, and something came up at lunch, and his name was mentioned, and so I looked up uh, the guy, and he made actually a web browser called Lynx, which I had used back in college. I had installed it on this little Japanese uh, PDA computer thing, and I used it because Lynx is a web browser that doesn't show images, and I'm not even sure if it runs JavaScript, but it... Uh, and because it, it doesn't show images, it's very lightweight. It's very fast for reading text. And um, and this PDA I had in college was very uh, not very powerful. And so Lynx was one of the ways that I could browse the internet on this small device um, quickly, relatively, because Firefox would just like load so slowly and then it would crash and it was very painful. Um, so cool device, but it was about five years too early. It would take about five years for the chips to be fast enough to really one run browser as well at that scale. In any case, when I looked him up, I found his blog, and of course at the time um, I was very interested in real estate, still am, but was even more interested then, and I noticed that he wrote this article about his own home buying experience in the Bay Area, and, um, and uh, let's see. Well, without going too deep into the article, he basically comes to the same conclusion or a similar conclusion um, to uh, uh, the same conclusion as you need equity to live in Silicon Valley, is that the normal salaries that are paid, even to people who are well compensated in the Bay Area, are not, en are not enough uh, to purchase these homes that are a million dollars or more. And he goes into detail about... Um, how much income you would need, and um, I mean, obviously, there's just not a whole lot of jobs that will pay uh, 421,000, 885,000 to afford mortgages that are as big as the mortgages required by these homes. Um, so, if you are just, I don't know, thinking about buying a home in the Bay Area, again, another interesting article that uh, kind of goes into detail about some of the weird dynamics here in the perspective of a very, a very smart guy. Uh, from back in 2013. All right, well, that is it for Five Year Club video number 224. I hope you will enjoy these resources and look at them, um, and they will provide you some nice, nerdy reading material. Have a fabulous evening.